Well, 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 well. Hey, hey, everybody. Brother Steve from Hollywood, California. Woo! It's a great Sunday afternoon. It's going to get good today. This is going to get good today. Get your popcorn. Get popcorn. You know, I need some. I, hold on. Hold on. Hold, hold on, church. Hold on, saints. This is going to get real good today. Yep. Get, your, get the clip off the popcorn. Get some popcorn. Get ready. It's going to get good and wonderful today. D. Starks himself, Derek Starks, is with us today. Now, his bio is so long, my eyes got tired of reading. So if you logging on right now, if you're a friend of Derek Starks, if you uh, he did your record or you a gospel artist trying to get your record done or you trying to get together, you do what you got to do. Because D. Starks, one of the greatest. Yeah, that's right. I'm getting comfortable for this. I'm, I'm just going to do one of these today. One of the greatest mixers, producers, and engineers in the country today is with us live on our broadcast today. Derek Starks himself, we want to make sure you tune in, you listen in, share this. If you friends of Derek, let them know you're out there watching. If you are, are you are friends of him, let them know you're watching again. If you are a member of his church, church, wait a minute, he's not the minister of music at a church. Got his own church. My God in here is Derek Stark, a pastor? It's getting goody. Brother Steve from Hollywood, California, get with us. From Hollywood. Yo, DJ. Are you the mixer yet? Your DJ has only just begun. Hello, I'm Bishop T.D. Jakes, and you're watching Brother Steve TV. Hey, it's LaToya Luckett, and you're watching Brother Steve TV. This is Rance Allen, and you're watching my friend, Brother Steve TV. Hey, y'all, this is Leandra Johnson, and you're watching Brother Steve TV. Hi, this is Ronnie Dark Child Jerky. This is Chris Tucker. This is Kirk Franklin. And you are watching Brother Steve TV. And you watch Brother Steve. Brother Steve TV. From Hollywood, California, you're watching Brother Steve TV. It's the Praise Jam Party, yep, it's going up. Brother Steve, the Sunshine Band, that's what's up. Him and his crew, they really make the stations nervous. Brother Steve deliver hits like the Postal Service. Must I remind you of his credentials? Brother Steve, go hard, he go large, he's monumental. That's it, it's over. A finality, call the Paul Ferris, the station's buried in Cali. 360, going hard for the Lord, it's the Praise Jam Party. Brother Steve is in charge. For all the hot exclusives and the brand new styles, tune in every week, adjust your radio dial. To the most unpredictable show on the airwaves, from the land of the stars, to the home of the brave. Yeah. Steve, going hard for the Lord. Yeah. From Hollywood, California, Brother Steve here with us on this wonderful, wonderful Sunday afternoon. It's getting good today, y'all. It's good. D Starks, the one and only Derek Starks is with me on today, and I uh, want to make sure he is there live with us. Derek Starks, what's up, Doc? How you doing, man? Hey, man, I'm doing good, man. What? Derek Starks hey. is with us today, the one, the only. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Let, let me, let, let's set this up the right way. We're going to make a little change. In our broadcast, y'all can see this. Boom! Pastor Derek Starks. Doc, how you doing? Man, I am good. I am wonderful. God is just amazing. Um, he's kept us through this pandemic. And um, I, I'm just, it's, it's just a blessing to be here. It's good to be alive, man. Let's kick off the broadcast. Tell us about, first of all, who you want to give a shout out to? I'm not going to give you no suggestions next to you in the same room. But who you want to give a shout out to before we kick off this broadcast today? Well, I, I want to definitely give a shout out to my family, my family, uh, my wife Gretchen of 25 years, my uh, children Brooklyn, Blake, Destiny, and D. Um, it's my beautiful family, my um, Life Church family. 
uh, Life Church Detroit, Life Church Atlanta. Uh, just my folks, uh, Mom Hicks, praying for my mom. We're seeing about mom, seeing about my mother, Dorothy Starks. My family, love my fam. Man, well, that, hold on. Now, Kim, is it okay if I just break out and tell everybody you want to give a shout out to your grandchildren, Derek? Oh my, when did I know Derek? But then they, they laughing at me when hold I on. know she was a parent. Your Wait, great. Hold on, I see. I'm not you. I'm not used to this, man. I praise God. Okay, I'm. I'm getting. I, <laughs> I, I, you know, I get nervous when I talk about this little fella, Jamil Matthews. Uh, Jamil Matthews, oh man, he's a bundle of joy. Uh, he's just, this is my first grandchild. He's three months old and uh, I'm I'm on the phone with him almost every day or every other day um, looking at him and trying to talk to him. And, you know, <laughs> me and my wife, uh, we love that little boy. He's just, he's a blessing, man. Three months, well, you know, I can't complain. My daughter is pushing six months now. Congratulations. And, uh, thank you, Doc. You know, got a wonderful, beautiful wife and the whole nine yards in six months. And uh, all I can say is um, DNW, diapers and wipes, Doc. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Every father so is laughing at me. Doc, every Sunday night, this is our tradition. Every Sunday when I get off the air, we jump in the car and we go to Target and we target up for the week because it's like diapers. And then sometimes, you know, I mean, I, my daughter is never going to go hungry. You know, yeah. God's will. Amen. But when she went with them diapers, died, one time I put a diaper on her and she was grinning. And then it wasn't a minute and 18 seconds later, she lit that diaper up and said, hey, 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 wait, hey. That's yeah. sixty-two cent. Hold on, you got no. You no, you gonna sit in that for about five minutes at least? Just diapers and wipes, yeah. Doc. Yeah, diapers and wipes. I know about that with uh, with our four, you know, with our twins. And uh, I want to uh, shout out, shout them out to their doing uh, wonderful. My baby girl, she's in college. She's at the um, historic Virginia Union College. Um, uh, my uh, destiny's married with uh, Jamil Blake is is working with my son. God has blessed my son. I'll be out there soon. Yeah, yeah. In a couple of weeks, my son have a store there, and he just moved his store to Melrose Avenue. Wow. So it's it's a it's a big deal. Derek is doing well. They call him Soul 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 Dot Resale is his Instagram. But God is blessed. He's one of the leading um sneakerheads in the country he got we got a store in atlanta we get ready to open the store in atlanta store in la and also miami and it's just growing and growing so check derek starks out so s-o-l-e dot resale r-e-s-e-l-l -L. um and uh, on ig i'm telling you god has connected him and blessed them tremendously wow. We're excited about that. If you are friends of Derek Starks, you want to leave a message, say hello, leave a comment. Thanks, Gregory Gay as well. Okay, hello, bless you too. Hey, Derek, we got a Facebook user out there saying hello to you. Doc, let's get into, well, first of all, congratulations, the new vice president of the Church of God in Christ International Music Department. Man, that's huge, 6.5 million members. That's huge that you are the vice president. Well, Let's talk I mean, about that. first of all, I have to um, thank God for... Uh, uh, hold on. Let me say it for our presiding bishop, Bishop J. Juicy. Okay, now you can go ahead and say it. I, I got it all first. <laughs> got it all uh, first. I got it all first. <laughs> I was with Bishop Shear today in service today. Uh, while I'm in Detroit, I'm at uh, um, Bishop J. Drew Shear's church doing ministry. And also, my brother is the founder and pastor of the Life Church Detroit. Okay. So uh, I was at both churches today, did service today with Bishop Sheard. So I want to um, thank God for uh, Bishop J. Drew Sheard uh, appointing me as a vice president of the International uh, Music Department of the Church of God in Christ. Man, listen, I grew up in this church. Yeah. 
you know, grew up in this church as a little boy. My dad would take us to the convocations every year, every year, man, when I was a little kid. And we would get up at 5 a.m., 5, no, 4 a.m. and to be at church to get a seat. At to get Cook, a seat? To get a seat at Cook Convention Center. I remember man. it like it was yesterday. Wow. We stayed, um, we stayed at the, in those days, we stayed at the Red Roof Inn. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> and, I thought it and, was us. Yeah, yeah, we stayed at the Red Roof Inn and then we, we, we moved on up to the Baymont Inn across the street. Wait, 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 not the one by the uh, airport where the FedEx trucks was? It's, it's, we were at the one, uh, Sycamore View. That was the Yeah. Street. Because we was at, we used to stay at the Baymont Inn where they gave us what was called the suite. I'm like, okay, mom, dad had the suite. I'm like, well, the suite. I walked in and say, this just here, two rooms connected. <laughs> where the suite? They say, you in it? I say, well, yeah. can is there like room service up in this joint? Is there room? And yeah. then my dad had to get up at 4 a.m. to yeah. serve. And yeah. I said, dad, let me tell you something now. And you know, I used to come to town and stay with my parents, mooch off of them, stay in their room. And when we had to get up at four o'clock, we just went to bed at midnight. Had to get up yeah. at four o'clock to put on a vestment to go stand in the to serve. I said, Dad, Mom, as your son, this is your last time. We're not doing this. We move you out of this hotel. We're not here no more. And we're going, we're not doing this no more. Doc. That's yeah. Dedication. I know you said the bay my like, oh, you best we have not. Yeah, we was at the red roof first. And my dad, the church, prayer tabernacle church of God in Christ. My father has passed away three yeah. years ago. But he would would take us every year faithfully. And um, you know, I would have never dreamed that I would be in this position just growing up in the church and serving in the the choirs with Dr. Iris Stevenson and Dr. Matty Moss Clark and all, all of the leaders that I was able to assist and work with. But Brother Steve, um, I, they used to ask me, hey, my friends, hey, man, where you stand? I try to change the subject because I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want them to know that I was, you know, stand at, they stand at the Peabody. Right. They, oh, they down the Peabody with the ducks and everything, and the yeah, Peabody and the walk. Sheraton. I go, go to the Peabody and watch the ducks walk at yeah. 12 noon. <laughs> but, um, you know, they stand there with their dad and fathers, bishops and stuff. My friends, the Bogans, Caiaphas, and yeah. um, uh, Walter Jr., uh, uh, Bishop Chucky Johnson, he's a, he's a bishop now. All of us, we hung together. We yeah. stayed in rooms together. But... Um, the Lord allowed us finally to get downtown <laughs> where we could walk across the street to convocation. But, you know, I know uh, I praise God for those days. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I praise God for, for those days. But I was saying, I never thought that I would be where I am today in this church, just grow, just going um, to church and always wanted to play. I'm going to tell you a quick story that we can jump yeah. wherever you want to go. Um, I remember I was about, mm, I was think I was about 12 years old. We mm -hmm. were at Cook Convention Center. We were all the way up at the top. Then, you know, after Sunday school, we have Sunday school. You know, they got several Sunday school classes there. And you I was- up, fact, you, you in Sunday school class by default. Yeah. You, you would just go yeah. sit down where you okay. sat, they'll put somebody yeah. like, hey, you, you yeah. sit like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you, yeah. you you, you and you in Sunday school. So <laughs> so they uh they were getting ready to start service. It was about 12, and they said we need a musician. And Dr. Clark was downstairs rehearsing with the choir, and they was getting ready to come up. So I said, Mom, they need a musician. Can I go play? And uh she was like, No, Derek, don't worry about it. I said, Mom, can I? I begged her. And she said, Yes, man, I flew down them steps. I don't even remember hitting steps, ran all the way up to the podium. And when I got up there, Twinkie was coming in on the other side and I beat her to the organ. <laughs> 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 uh, I beat Twinkie to the organ and I uh, jumped on and I played for uh, that uh, song that they sang, opening up services. That's a memory that I will never ever wow. forget, you know, and, um, uh, it's just 
a blessing. And growing up in Detroit, I worked at Dr. Clark School, Clark Conservatory School of Music. Wow. Even then, I taught music there and piano and voice with her. I, I never thought I would even be in this place. You know, I want to give a shout out to one of my dear friends. I've been waiting to get him on my program, Bishop Derek Hutchins. He wants to give you a shout out out there doing great things in Florida and uh, looking forward to hearing from you, Bishop, real soon. Uh, Bishop, Steve, go ahead. I served Bishop uh, Hutchins while I was there in Florida, and I praise God for Bishop H Hutchins and his ministry. And thank you, Bishop. Well, Brother Steve, radio from Hollywood, California. My special guest today is Pastor Derek Starks, one of the greatest producers in the gospel music industry to date. Derek, let me let, let me just do this real quick. I have it on my cell phone, so th let me say it. He's a producer, songwriter, uh, composer, keyboardist, Ron Winans, the Winans family, Derek Stark, today's, dinner, today's generation, Charlene Bell, Just Praise CD, Church of God in Christ, organist for that song. He'll bring you up. We know that song. Dr. Yeah, Mighty Moss Clark, so Unique 5. Vicky Winans, Bring It All Together, Precious Lord. Daryl Coley, 1998. The Wigfield Company, uh, writer's credit on that. Gail Crescent, Mercy, Saw CD, uh, Crystal Rose Records, Derek Starks and Today's Generation. EMI Tour producer, producer and writer, featuring Rance Allen. He's on time. Uh, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, Great Men of Gospel, Pure Gospel Records, Pure Gospel Top 10, Choirs, Crystal Rose, uh, CD writer, all credits, Dave Starks, and Today's Generation again. Producer writers for Twinkie Clark, the one he beat to the organ at one time. Howard Hewitt, Alvin Slaughter. This list goes on Dr. Bobby Jones, Greater Florida Mass Choir, Vicky Winans, bringing it all together. Uh, CD, Derek Starks, Lucius, uh, Shake, yeah. So look, that was that was you, Derek. We're singing on that. My group did all of that. Man, both. look the, everywhere, everywhere. Bishop T D Jakes, Megafest, Organist, Mighty Clouds of Joy, Candy Staten, Ralph Moore. His discography won't stop. Dorinda Clark Cole taking it all back. The Stella Awards 2009 Grammy nom nomination for the Song of the Year. Being my Trailblazer, uh, Song of the Year. Take it back. Dorothy Norwood, Pastor Jasper Williams. Your list goes on, Doc. It just goes on. Soul Train, uh, a nominee uh, for Sacrifice album. Gospel Roundup Magazine, Hot 100, Top 100 list. Awarded Motown Detroit City Music Awards, Outstanding Gospel Instruments Producer, Stellar Awards recipient for Sacrifice. Your discography does not stop, Doc, and it keeps going on. What has sustained you in the gospel music industry this long? What's the key? Just my love for God. My love my love for God. I have to really thank God for the foundation that I have, uh, that I've had with my parents, my mother and my father. Uh, was brought up in the church prayer tabernacle. Well, I had to go back to God's holy tabernacle to where uh, the church we grew up in before we, uh, my dad started pastor and he served uh, the late Zelty Crawford. Yeah. Uh, the, he served the late Zelty Crawford. What's crazy, Brother Steve, I'm still speaking about my foundation. There at our church, there, uh, uh, God's Holy Tabernacle Church of God in Christ, Dorinda Clark Cole was a minister of music. No way. Dorinda was the minister of music at eight years. I was about eight years old. I think she was, um, I don't know. She was 18, 19. See, this is stuff people don't know about. Dorinda, now let me just, in, in fact, check me. Dorinda was Mr. Music at that church, right? Yes. Now, am I correct that Karen was over at the, on the organ at Bailey Cathedral? Karen was Karen was playing the organ also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Karen Karen was playing. Lady Karen Clark she Yes. Playing. And, uh, and where was Twinkie at? Twinkie was traveling with Doctor Clark everywhere, <laughs> workshops, wow. and wow. just you know. So I would sit on the organ every Sunday. My job was to hold the microphone for Durant, Dr. Wow. Durant Cole. As a little boy, I sat there because we didn't have the boom stand mics. No. And Brother Steve. No. <laughs> I just turned 50, I'm 51 now. Uh, we didn't have the boom stand mics like that back then. I mean, they had some, but I know they didn't have none at the church. 
I was her microphone stand. <laughs> I've never heard like that before. But you, but you're right. I held the microphone for her every Sunday. Wow. Every Sunday. So that's how I got to know her. I got to know what she liked, what song, what key she liked, and and in the discography you was reading the song. One of the biggest songs of my career was a song called "Take It Back." Everything that the devil stole, God's giving it back yeah. to me. I won the Songwriter of the Year award for that song, and uh, the, uh, Dr. Dorinda Cole sang it. I have four singles on Dr. Cole. He brought me so many times for my good and take it back. Take it back was was one of the biggest songs that um, um, I, I I was able to pin for Dr. Cole. So we're speaking about uh, foundation. So that's part of my foundation. After that, we uh, my dad was led to pastor the Prayer Tabernacle Church of God in Christ. And there I sat under the tutelage of my auntie Shaquilla Reed. I mean, Shaquilla Reed at the time. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal musician. She was the one that turned me on to Andre Crouch. Oh, and my gosh. Oh, my gosh. She turned me on to Andre Crouch. And then years later, I become the minister of music at Christ Memorial. We'll talk about that, See, too. Because they want to know, how'd you go from Detroit to Los Angeles? Because I remember those days. You yeah. said Christ Memorial here in the San Fernando Valley, here in California. Well, after I won, uh, after I won the BMI award, the, the same year I won for Take It Back, they were honoring Andre, Pastor Andre Crouch and Donnie McKirkland. Mm -hmm. They were being honored that night. And I had the song, happened to have the song of the year. So the BMI award, they will recognize um, the song, those songwriters. And then they will recognize who had the number one song in gospel. So that night, I was honored with Pastor Donnie McKirkland and uh, Pastor Andre Crouch. We're standing in the back talking, and he's congratulating me and said, you wrote Take take It Back, and I wrote Take Me Back. Mm. And that was our connection. He said, I want you to come out to L.A. Let me know when you come out to L.A. I want to work with you. And um, so, how did that make you feel? One of the greatest songwriters of all time, saying, "You know, because I know the feeling." Andre, you, you know, Andre was my neighbor. He lived down the street. You know, he lived down the street yeah. from me. I'm, I'm getting emotional now because just thinking about it. Uh, when I when I got out there, uh, he asked me if I would help him because his health was was kind of failing. Yeah, and he asked me would I help him at the church, and I started there at the church and one Sunday morning, he got up and he said, he's appointed me, Derek Starks, as the minister of music of Christ Memorial Church of God in Christ. He said, Christ Memorial Church has never had a minister of music outside of Pastor Andre Crouch. Those wow. are his words. And he said, and today I'm appointing, I guess he worked with his, worked with his father. He and yeah. had, uh, lady uh, Sandra worked worked there with and their other brother, and uh, but um, he would have me come to his house, and my wife will tell you that I'm telling you the truth. He would have me. He called me almost every day, and said, "Would you come over and write?" And what he taught me, he told me his challenge to me was, he said, "What I need you to do, Derek." is write a song every day. He said, that's my challenge to you. Wow. Write a song every day. He said, they may not all be good. He said, but when you continue to do this, he said, that's how you become a better writer when you write. So he challenged me, and, and, and then he started talking about, uh, like, in sports, if you keep shooting at basketball, like Larry Bird, I heard he used to shoot at night three you know at night with 12 o'clock midnight and was making it and you know if you can make it at night you know you can make it in the day yeah 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 and and it was just um he he taught me how to man he oh my god that man showed me so much how to record how to get your sound uh breathy tones how to sing tell me a secret real quick tell me because i'm telling you what you're saying to me I lived it. Good shout out to our, our dear friend, 
watching our broadcast right now. But let me say this to you. Tell me one of those secrets because what you're saying is so much him. What you're saying, I know is true because here I am from Cleveland going out to Andre's studio, to the church on Wednesday night, and he will sit there, and when church is over, he'll talk to you for an extra hour. Yes. Throwing stuff in your head, and you're like, oh, my God, this is deep. Tell me one of those secrets about breathing. What, what, tell me about music. One of the secrets that uh, he he told me about in, um, in recording, he, t he, um, he took me to the church. Uh, we would be we'd go to the church or at his house. He uh, he wanted to learn Pro Tools. Okay, uh, wow. he, he wanted to learn Pro Tools, but it was so far advanced. Pastor Andre Crouch he had about six cassette tapes on his baby grand piano. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and that's how he would record to his cassette. He had uh, all kind of cassette tapes. And he would. That's how he kept up with his recording, because he could, he wasn't uh, computer savvy. Yeah. To switch over to Pro Tools, so he kept a recorder by him all all of the time. Yeah, yeah. I go to the house and I see all these cassettes, and I'm like, wow. I mean, song after song, and 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 um, uh, Lady Sandra would say, even when he was asleep, sometimes his foot would be tapping. And he's writing a song and while he's, you know, while he's sleeping, wake up, get the words or speak the words. And um, so the one of the techniques that he showed me was this getting the sound was getting this breathy sound was. And I never knew, never knew this. When you listen to Pastor Andre Crouch music and, and his vocals, they're unique. They're different. They, mm -hmm. they he did some things. Sometimes he had, excuse me, the sopranos. Sometimes he had the tenor sing the soprano note, uh, an octave lower, and you know, and, and, I mean, just all kind of crazy little things. But the breathing thing, the breathy tone, he would have them go in the studio and do this. Just say if we were singing soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Okay. He would have that he would record. So many things. So we are going to see the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to see the king. And they would stack that. Brother Steve, this is some, this, this. Now, is, get off my show. I'm out. Get off, get off the air. Brother Steve, listen, I'm telling you, this is some, this is some deep, this is some deep, this is some deep stuff. Some that, deep stuff. We're going to say that, stuff. <laughs> that, that, and he would get that breathy tone and they would do a whole song just like that recorded and stack that so if they say praise the lord you will hear you will, you will hear that breath under the brother steve wow brother steve wow he, he showed me that he showed me um he just showed me so many. Give me, give me, give me, give me one short one, one short because this is helping somebody on our broadcast. Derek, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking to Derek Starks, mega producer, uh, nationwide. We're going to give out the information you can reach him, but give me one more quick one. Uh, well, uh, one, one of the one of the one of one of the things that I loved about him was the way he recorded. I mean, the the way he the way he took vocals, and he was showing me that. Uh, uh, he he didn't read he didn't read music, you know. But yet still, they were they respected him all over the world. Yeah, they respected him. He I walk in the room with him, and he, he and he was he say this is Derek Starks. I need you to hook him up, and just like on, that. His, on his word. Yeah, I was on TBN with him. I just went. As he was a guest, they were honoring him on TV, and he told me, "I want you to go." I was sitting in the audience. This is my first time being on. Man, that's him. Being in. I'm sitting in the audience. They start singing the song. Andre Crouch stops them and say, "Tell Derek to come up here and do the song with us." I'm sitting in the audience. Mm. He said, "Go get him," and they went and got me and put me on the piano, and we were saying, "Take it back." And I got a clip of it. I mean, he just opened up so many doors. 
for me. He showed me where, uh, like, if Michael Jackson came, which a lot of people didn't know, sometimes Michael Jackson would go to the church. There was a space upstairs. Yeah, yeah, by, by that studio, that, that little yeah. sound room. Yes. Uh huh. You couldn't see in there. No, you couldn't. But you could see out. You and see, and they had like two two little sections in there. Yes. Yep. And a lot of people didn't know. Many Sundays, Michael Jackson will come to church and be sitting up there in the service. That's one of the reasons why he was so instrumental in doing the music for the service, the funeral uh, for Michael Jackson. Because the, you, people really don't realize how Andre co-wrote Man in the Mirror. Look on the back of the CD, church folks, yes. you know. Man, Man uh, in the Mirror, they had the white men singing on that. Yeah, cross music. Yes. So he was just so instrumental in uh, helping me develop as uh, showing me techniques, how to record, what buttons to push, how to stack this, and how to do. A lot A lot of stuff is technical that, uh, that, that he showed me, he introduced me to people like Bill Maxwell. We're yeah. friends today because of uh pastor andre and, and yeah, well, the drums yes all those tv shows yeah bill have you done some television shows as well, well? I, I just did i have take it back was featured in um what is that great lovecraft country yeah it was i'll send you the clip wow and, when when she went crazy and she wanted to take back stuff, she got a bat and started busting the windows out. I don't care. I'm glad they they played played the song at, uh, during the scene. So that was uh, the first, and uh, you know, and I'm just now getting into uh, movies and scoring yeah. and that that type of thing. So, well, well, let me ask you this real quick: What yes, advice would you give artists? Who say they're struggling? Because I can't accept that. You know, you're, you're all everybody's making it, doing the what you can. But you sustain for a long time, Doc. What advice would you give to these songwriters that want to be? You, I, I will always say this: you are one of the greatest mixers. Now you can anybody can record a record on Pro Tools and whatever. <laughs> but my mentor told me when you get done with all that, take your stuff to Derek Stark so he can mix it down. Right. What's the secret to sustaining? What advice could you give to help somebody? Well, I, I think you got to always keep God in it. You know, you always got to, you can't forget about, you can't get caught up in um, uh, what people are saying. A man said this to me, a friend of mine said this to me a long time ago. He said, um, don't believe your headlines. Mm. His name was Tim Smith. He's a radio, um, um, what do you call him? Disc jockeys, I don't know. Yeah, radio announcer. Radio announcer. Gospel radio announcer, Tim Smith out of Detroit, Michigan. And he pulled me to the side. He said, man, you're going places. God is opening up doors. And my name was ringing, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. And all kind of stuff is happening. And he said, I want to tell you something, Derek. Don't believe your headline. Explain that to me. It just it's just saying all of the things that people are saying about you, you can't get caught up in that. People are saying you're great. People are saying you're wonderful. And people are saying sometimes people get caught up in those compliments and then you start believing that I'm wonderful. Okay, <laughs> folks, gotcha. folks telling you that you're wonderful and you start believing that you're wonderful. You start acting wonderful. You uh -oh. start treating people different. <laughs> You start treating people a certain way. You start treating people like they're beneath you. They, God, I mean, you're so they, they, you 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 get you can't get beside yourself being so deep and wonderful because that person you kicked to the curb today may end up being a person signing your check next week for the gig you're working on. And that, and and that's that's true. I mean, even just speaking about the situation with me and myself and Bishop Shear. Yeah. I was minister of music for, for GEI for several years. The Lord called us away to move to Georgia. And um, I served Bishop Shear, but he didn't owe me anything. I was I was gone. Yeah. You know? 
And if I, you know, he remembered me. That's what that's what I'm trying to say. It's kind of to the point to the point that you said he re, he remembered me. So I you got to be careful how you treat people, how you how you treat people, how you um, you know. And I thank God. I keep talking about foundation. You know what, what I mean? But, but but it's okay, Pastor, because people need to hear that this whole interview has gone a whole different direction because somebody's gonna watch the replay, somebody's gonna get it, some artist is gonna click in their heads. What well, maybe I've had artists call me up and say, Well, I want to do this. Can you help me do that? And I'm like, okay, well, this is what you know we do. Is that well, let me talk to my team and my management. Hold on, Doc. Your management team. Yeah. Uh, if I if Fred Hammond's calling me, I'm talking to Kirk, I'm talking to Donnie, I'm talking to D Star. Why I gotta listen to you calling your man? You make the decisions. Yeah. Fred, don't get you getting too deep. You yeah. know, we had I, I'm gonna tell you this, I'm gonna shut up. We had the running joke. You know how good your record is selling when you go to the Stellar Awards. Now, here's the joke though. You go the first year, you got a hair person, you got a makeup person. You got a black car pick you up at the airport. You got a handler at the airport, manager at the airport, record company, and then eight people following you around every banquet, every stellar event, everywhere you go. Yeah. The next year, you catch Uber from the airport. You got your whole suitcase with the clothes from the house. And people are like, oh, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Yeah. Now, yeah. So, so you know what your, because the record company, they're going to flip on you tomorrow. Yeah. You got to sustain what you said, foundation. All this goes back to where the old Bay Monty Inn Hotel, to yeah. where mama can I play, asking your parents, can I go play? Not putting yourself at the head of the table, waiting for the opportunity to go open yeah. the door, Doc. And you made me think about something. I remember a um, um, perfect example when I, I was in New York and all week long I had a limousine. I was everywhere wow. driving. I mean, they were taking me in. I'm, I got the window now, having a good time, waving at people. They like, who is that? <laughs> I get, I get back home. I didn't even have a ride to get, <laughs> from, the <airport laughs> to get from from the airport to the house. <laughs> I've been in the limo all week long. You can't get caught up in that stuff. Now, that was me for years before I got married. I would, brother Steve, hey, how you doing? Hey, 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 all the people, hey, brother. Hey, when I got to LAX, I was waiting for the shuttle bus to pick me up, that little white van to pick me up to take or, me back home. Or the flyway. I, I know about the flyway. What you know about the flyway, I dog? Know the, I, know, I, know, I know the flyway will take you all the way. All the way. Take you all the way to almost the Santa Clara <laughs> Reader. That, that's Six dollars. Yes. Yeah, the flyway. But, take the, but my, my point is you can't get caught up and, and what people are saying and and yeah. all of this stuff and blow and some of these artists and I you know and I love them you know but you can't get caught up and start thinking you uh, um Sunday's best Lord have mercy yeah. I should even said that yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. sometimes people people get caught up in, and I don't have nothing against the these these shows and what what happens yeah. some people lift people up and they put them on. They put them up there, and they don't really want to be there. No, they don't. They don't really want to be there. So when they start living out who they really are, it's like well, I thought you were Sunday's best. That's it. I'm I'm meddling. I don't start. No, that's all right, Doc. That's all right. We we can go right. But, but you now you you can get put on that platform, and I'm calling you up, and your cell phone ain't even working. Yeah, that's okay. true. Okay. Don't I have mean, a place to stay. No. No, well, I'm right now that we working on working on what? What you working on? Yeah. Everybody just so busy. Just I'm, I'm just busy. okay. All right, whatever. You know, okay, whatever. It's all right. It's whatever. You need that foundation, and you need. Wow. This. So my foundation was prayer. Yeah. Fasting. We had we had all night all night prayer, brother Steve. But what you know about that Friday night all night prayer? You walk around the church and march at three in the morning. Walk around the church three a.m. <laughs> Listen, listen, brother Steve. I got the schedule. We would pray from twelve to one. My dad would <laughs> preach from preach from one to two. Uh, we'll get back down uh, from three to four. We'll pray. We'll get yeah. back up and then we'll sing. Then we'll yeah. testify. He'll preach a little more all night long. 
consecration, yeah. three day consecration. People breath don't know what breath mints and water, breath mints and water. Ain't no yeah, eating no breath. chicken wings and fries. What? Yes. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that kind of fast like folk fast of the day. We didn't <laughs> eat nothing. You know, I had this was one guy told me he was on a fast. He got up and ate a full breakfast <laughs> and, and, and and said he was fasting the rest of the no. That ain't no fast. So how about that? No, you know you're on a fast when you do this. Hey doc, God bless you. Good to see you. Could you you know you used to cover yeah. your mouth? God bless you. Yeah. To... yeah, so I'm saying fasting and praying and seeking God, seeking the face of God all night long. God did something in me in those shut-ins. Yeah. God did something in me in that. Uh, I didn't want to go all the time, but my father said, no, we're going to church. We're, wow. we're going to church. I, Brother Steve, I made the basketball team for uh, the school I went to. Made the basketball team. Ran cross country. Made the basketball team. I was ready to play. And uh, found out the games was on Tuesdays and Fridays. Oh, don't please don't, Derek. Uh -uh, please don't say all things about it. Oh, let me give me some, give me some Advil. Let me give me some Tylenol. Don't say what I think you about. Yeah, drink some water, Doc. Just, hey, games was I made the team, brother Steve. <laughs> I worked hard. We, you know, running cross country, competing against other schools. I ran cross country, made the team, got in shape. Oh, practice work. We get ready to start the season. I tell my dad, Dad, I I made the team. Congratulations, son. I'm happy for you. <laughs> yeah, our games is on Tuesdays and Friday. Tuesdays and Fridays. We got, <laughs> we got church on Tuesdays and Friday. You just quit. Go tell you. So I mean, and I <laughs> he didn't mean it like that, but yeah. My parents, they didn't play about church. That's my point. They did not play about church. Doc, we sports. could not watch. We could not turn the TV on Channel 43 on Saturdays to see Soul Train. We couldn't have a 45 in the house. We couldn't have a Jackson 5. I want you back. Even the even the cereal. What was that? Coco Chris. Remember the Coco Chris cereal where you had the little record on the side? But yeah. no, we're not buying that. Uh, that's, yeah. that's that worldly music. No, no, you're going to get some of this or it's 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 ABC. It's helping me with my phonics. Uh uh, no, 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 no. no. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't do that. So that's why I had so much church. People call me a, a, a churchy church. I had so much church in me. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, that's what that's what was in me. You are what you eat. The church. That's true. You know, so I grew up on Inez Andrews. Now, Lord, uh -uh. Oh, ooh, the uh -uh. all that. Uh, uh, Claude Jeter, the Dixie Hummingbirds. I mean, wow. that's that was who I grew up on, you know. So, ran uh, Bishop Rand's Allen, yes, you know, and, and, and others. So, I uh, I I keep talking about it. The foundation is so important, it's so important that you 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 build on that foundation and don't get caught up in what people say and what people think or think. So. I'm I'm grateful, Ooh. Bishop Sheard, to serve this church, to uh, to serve the Church of God in Christ. I've already done some things with our president, uh, Dr. Myron Williams, and um, uh, Kiara Sheard, Rosalind Sanders, and uh, Pastor C. Ivan Johnson is is the team that that we have, and I've already been active. Uh, I've, unfortunately, we've been doing uh, some funerals, but we we we've been been active and um, and doing uh, ministry, so I do workshops. I'm ready to go out. Okay, that's I'm what I wanted to say. Convocation. I'm I'm ready to come. come so let me here. say this. Let me play this clip real quick, and I want the people to know and hear. He is available. His email is at the bottom of the screen. If you need him to come teach your choir some parts, some proper structure, if you want him to come talk to your minister of music, if you want him to talk to your son or your daughter who's playing the organ and is trying to learn to do better for your church, D Starks is the man. He will show up. He will come. Now, this time, we do have transportation for him at the airport to get back home. So if you pick him up in a limousine, then you old school, just pick him up in an SUV. But let me play this for you real quick. Tell us about this song. This is D Starks, and we're going to play this for Blessings and glory. Yeah. 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 
Doc, now let me tell you something. Anytime my mama jump on and comment, the song keeps going, the whole show keeps going. Mama said, who was, thank you. Doc, you got my mama happy now. Doc. Now, you, wow. now you get anything you want now. Your mama doesn't love that song. I'm going to send that to mama and uh, hook her mama up. Doc, your music is just different. Your music has the sound. Who would you say you pattern your, 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 I know we got some Andre Crouch in there. We've got some little bit of the Clarks and everything, but what makes the Derek's, what what makes the Stark sound? Wow. Uh, come like that. I'm going to come at you like that. Yeah, the, the Stark sound I have, uh, growing up in the city of Detroit, um, you have, you, I had. Oh, you can start right there. I was you just school. said it. Growing yeah. up in the city, so that means on one weekend you can hit the Winans, Winans, you hit the Clarks, Clarks, Thomas Whitfield, the Whitfield, oh, Thomas, um, Commission was here, come out of here. I was Vanessa Bell Armstrong's um, um, uh, musician, traveled with her across just this this whole Detroit sound, uh, Reverend Charles Nix, yeah, of all all of that whole. I don't want to miss nobody. Uh, Rudy, yeah. St Pastor Rudy Stanfield. Stanfield. Oh, I, I, uh, we serve in the same jurisdiction, and I will be on the piano, and uh, I call him Rudy. No disrespect. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rudy will be on the organ. I learned so much from uh, sitting under Rudy, and then uh, one of the other things um, was just church. I grew up. Uh, Bishop Walter E. Bogan uh, ordained me. Brother Steve, we churched. Do you hear me? No, no I, I got you. I was in Cleveland now. Come on now. Don't, we, don't sleep. We was in we was down the street in Cleveland, Great yeah, Lakes. Church. Yeah. We were church, man. For we, real. We were church. And I I even when I was the um state minister of music, I would play for women's day service. Mm, and mm. some of the man, you talking about church. See, women's forget, Day. They forgetting about the Women's Day now. Listen, Women's Day service. There was some mothers that were seen, and they were, you know, and that's your training. That's you your don't training. Know they gonna sing, and they get up, and they just start. <laughs> they catch them. You don't know what direction they gonna go. You just get with it. Direction. You gotta catch them. And then listen. You remember when they used to call you out? When you didn't get the, who that little boy in that kid? Hold on, hold on, baby. No, no, don't, don't, don't do that. Just, oh, just hold on, see, just hold on. Some of these people, they, they, they wouldn't been, they wouldn't been able to take it. Uh, Doctor Clark used to make people get up. <laughs> they be on the organ and they're not following the, yeah. the, the artist right. She turn around, baby, cathedral, tell them get up. And you had to have tough skin. And to I, get I, up. I'll get up, go through. sit down, and they'll make you sit down. <laughs> and let somebody let somebody else play. And I remember one time I was so nervous. I was playing, I don't know, it may have been James Moore. And I was I told you I worked at the school. Yeah. So I knew Dr. Clark in a different way. Yeah. You know, she you know, she was Dr. Dr. Maddie Moss Clark. But at, at that school, she was, hey baby, how are you? How you doing, honey? You okay? Yeah, yeah. You need you. So I saw both sides. I saw yeah. the so now, you know, I saw it. And then I saw the hey honey. So I knew both sides of yeah. uh, Dr. Clark. Conservatory of music. Clark Conservatory School of Music. And I, I remember when I was playing for, I think it was James Moore. Mm -hmm. And she was sitting in that chair. And if she turn around and tell you to get up, I've seen a tell many musicians and I played and she sat right there. She turned around and she looked and she turned back around. She mm. tell me to get up. With them glasses. You know how she got them got yeah. the tent in them? She yes. gives you that look down. <laughs> yes, give you that look. And um, so just, oh my God, Dr. Clark is just so much, man. It's just. So, I, I don't know. So where can people reach you tell us about before we end the show that now we will supposed to be talking for 15 minutes but excuse me for just getting i mean you deserve an hour well thank you thank you doc. your legacy doc. i mean you ain't you know I'm, i remember you come to our guild meetings in la i mean 
people are like that's, that's Derek Starks. Wake up, church. You know, you just your legacy, Doc. I mean, tell us what they are to expect from the Derek Workshop tours. Derek Starks Workshop tours. Uh, uh, we, I know we, I just made that up, and he just took it. It just, it just sounds good. To workshop tours. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I because I I do that, brother Steve. Yeah. I go across the country. I go um, to Germany. Uh, and that's my friend, Derek Stubbs, uh, from uh, the Bahamas. Yeah. From um, Fort, uh, what is it? What is He's it? In, uh, uh, oh, uh, um, you know, why can't I can't? Grand Bahamas. I, Grand Bahamas. Yeah. I, uh -huh. uh, I can't think of the uh, Freeport. Freeport, yeah. Freeport, Bahamas. Uh, I would best. have done workshops with their choir. So in the Derek Starks workshop, we would deal with singing, songwriting, uh, just, you know, just, I try to tailor make uh, our workshops to the needs of the people. But one thing I discovered uh, that no matter where you go, I went all the way overseas and people still having the same problem. <laughs> problems. <laughs> it's the same issue. I mean, you know, with some folks, folks you know, dealing with pe people are people. That's my yeah. point, what I'm, what I'm trying to say. But um, just dealing with musicians and talking to musicians and training, I like to take all of this that God has given me uh, to do and just just give it back. Uh, the training, give back the, you know, how to follow a musician. I mean, how to follow a singer. There's a technique in following a singer. Yeah. Like certain chords you don't play before they get there. Ooh, oh, oh, ouch. Because you, if if you, Ouch. before they get there, you leading them. They're not leading you. Then the shepherd will so, be a sheep too. <laughs> so, yeah. So that little little stuff like the, even in backing up a preacher, there's okay. there's an art to backing up a preacher. You can make or break a preacher. Wow! Come on, somebody. When when wow. the preacher is preaching, it's yeah. sometimes it's like a rhythm. Okay. And, you have to, and go, uh, 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 uh. you can't be all over the place. That, so that, you got to follow the preacher and not the preacher follow, follow the preacher. you. You got to follow the preacher. Uh oh, in the right key? In the right key. Hmm. In the right key. So, I mean, so we deal with. Well, what if the preacher's in an odd key? Can you get him? Can you lead him? To, is there a technique to lead him to the right key? Well, you got, uh, my auntie always told me. It's um it's it's um uh, easier to push a, a person up if they're flat. It's easier to push them up to that key than to okay. take take them down. But um then some people they rely on certain things. So it's it's just the knowledge you you gotta you gotta learn. You gotta be willing and open minded. Cause some people are not teachable. Uh oh. You, you gotta be teachable. You can't think you know it all. I don't know it all, brother Steve. I've been doing it a long time. I don't know it all. You got to be teachable. And there are some people, you can't tell them nothing. At all. <laughs> Doc, you now, you know, that was a good spot for a commercial break. I was on a conference call one time, and some young buck was telling me how to hold a video camera to do an interview. And uh, I just kindly said in some other nice words. I said, Doc, before your parents started dating, I was doing this. So yeah. we, we're not, we not going to do that. Nah, we're not going to. So, know. but you got, you got to be teachable. And there are some people that they're, they're not teachable. And uh, Joel Smith, before he died, I yeah. went to see him in, in the hospital. And a lot of the musicians, when I was there, I think we were at Edwin Hawkins funeral and we went to, to the hospital to see him. And we went to encourage him. He ended up encouraging us, telling us you got to tell them, even if they don't want to hear it, you got to tell them. You still, and it's hard to tell somebody and teach somebody that, that don't want it, Brother Steve. It's, it's real hard. You know, it's like you just got to listen. And it, this will help you, you know. Man. So learn hymns. We deal with all, you can play the, the top 10 songs on, on, on the radio, but if the preacher sing Amazing Grace, you lost. 
Yeah, they be playing with the organ like something wrong with the key. And like they be trying to restart the thing with the start button and fixing the, the, the thing and like to, and look, look at the pedals reaching down. You know you can't. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that organ, Doc. Ain't nothing wrong with the organ. Then you want top dollar. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. What? Derek, we're not supposed to be going like this on oh, the broadcast. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, man. But we there already. It, but it's 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 the, it's the truth. It's it's the truth. Some people can't can't play a congregational song. Can't play a hymn. And you want you want the, you you want top dollar. Go and study. Get a foundation. Without and you ain't got a pastor. And be a well-rounded musician. Dorinda taught me. She said every artist and everybody should have a covering. Some of these cats go play at so many churches. Now they confused. Yeah. You need a covering, a pastor. Yes. Be accountable to somebody. I didn't know we was going to go in that direction. Uh, but I did want to mention uh, one one last thing. Can we, can, do we have time to play that video with Mr. Queen? Uh, and Rose, I think, um, Greg. Oh, that's the other one. I got to I gotta pull that one up. Okay. I, I don't, but, but I did want to talk about um, a song that the Lord gave me called Hang On. That's okay. a song that uh, Kiara she sang with the GI choir and uh, I won the award for writing that song. That was a huge song. Every, a lot of people was all across the country singing, what you gonna do when you're back against the wall? I mean- it died. You did that? That was the groove. I, yeah, God blessed me to write that song and it just went all across the country and um I praise God for it. I do. you know you 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 want the, the the actual um the actual track is the uh medley it goes like this everybody clap your hands I'm good doc I'm quick listen that that's Mr. Clean bro you know, yeah I was reading in my Bible the other day wow in hundred and fifty songs where David said let every scene that have breath, praise the Lord. You know, there are a lot of people who are critical about how we praise God and what we use to praise God with. But I'm from the school of thought where David said, let everything praise the Lord. In 150 Psalms, he said, praise him on the string instrument. Uh, let, let me interrupt this song before we go. Doc, you have broken this thing down so so well with just beats, tracks, everything. You 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 like put it all together, even with the legends, even Rose. That sounds like this. <laughs> all you need you just stay right there like in that mix you yeah. know let me say something about that now you said um the legend she is a she was a legend yeah but rose rose marie remson brown let me tell you this i missed that woman that was my women's convention buddy no, no listen <laughs> you you about to be messed up brother steve because i you don't know it my brother pastor anthony starks is married to Susan Remsen, 
who oh. is Rose's baby sister. Huh? My brother, Pastor Anthony Starks, my covering, my pastor, oh. Pastor Anthony Starks, is married to Susan Remsen Starks, who is Rose's baby sister. Oh. So that makes Rose my, I call her Auntie Rose, Rose my sister. She will cook for us every holiday in the kitchen, baking wow. cakes. I miss those German chocolate cakes. Man. The rolls. So we were connected. I mean, I'm, to, I'm talking about connected for real. That's blood connection. Blood, yeah. And a lot of people don't know it. A lot of people didn't know it. But God. that that's me and Rose. We that's we were like this, and we were getting ready to do some things, and the Lord called her home. Man, before we bring in Mr. Clean on this clip, before we close, what do you want to say in closing? Um, I just want to say um thank you to uh first of all, thank you, Brother Steve. Oh, yeah, yes, sir. That, thank you to all of the people that have supported my career down through the years. I tried to be a man of integrity. I tried to um, treat people the way that I wanted to be treated. And I praise God that I haven't had like um, um, uh, scandals and all of that kind of yeah. stuff in, in my career. And I give God, give God the praise and the glory. And I just want to continue to do ministry. I'm proud to be a son of the Church of God in Christ. I love this church. I, I appreciate Bishop, uh, presiding Bishop J. Drew Shear for giving me the opportunity to serve. Um, I want to come out. I come, I come to your town, to your city, your jurisdiction, your convocation. This is what this is what I do. I, I love. And you work with them, and it's affordable. Oh yeah, I work. You're not with talking you. about three first class airline tickets, two no. hotel suites, and two SUVs. No, and and and, and green. Uh, M Ms. No, <laughs> no. I, um, uh, I I I love doing what love doing what I do. I know that everybody don't have the same budget. Mm -hmm. You know, some bigger bigger churches can do more. I work with people where they are, where you know, where they you know has to, you know, budget wise. Everybody's not the same. So, but. My thing is, I I love doing it. God has put this yeah. in my to do. I went to Bahrain, I went to Germany, uh, Switzerland, South Africa, doing this ministry. Bahamas, all across the country. This is what I do. Right. So uh, my information is there. It's on yeah. the flyer. It's a, it's on the flyer. So um, you can reach me. This is what I do. I love doing what I do. Wow. I've been working with Bishop uh, Dickerson Wells yeah. on, on some some on some services that he he um, pulled me in and had me do. So I praise God for uh, he's such a nice such a nice gentleman. I, he, I, he is. That's my buddy. The, the yeah. best. Great man. Yeah. Doc, you bless us today. Uh, don't hang up. Stay on the line. We're gonna play a clip of this brother Steve from Hollywood, California. The one and only Derek Starks. Thanks once again to our dear friend. Brother Reggie Gay to help make this thing happen. We're gonna play a little bit, of Mr. Clean. We're gonna end our broadcast. D Starks, stay on. I got some other good stuff to share with you. Brother C from Hollywood, California. We'll talk to you soon. God bless. Yes, sir.